Welcome. This video, I will be going over a experimental design question that appears on the AP Physics 1 exam on the FRQ section. Uh, this particular question comes from the 2019, which is question 3. The experimental design question is always worth 12 points and the suggested time is 25 minutes. Here, you could read the scenario to yourself and there's a part A. There's a key component here I want you to make sure you understand from the scenario. Part A here, it says to state a basic physics principle or law that the student can use in designing this experiment to test a hypothesis. And two is to use that law to determine an expression. The state a basic principle or law mostly comes from your conservation of energy, conservation of momentum, one of those, or your laws like Newton's law or Hooke's law, one of those. Once you have an idea of it, you can now write an expression for it. When it says to determine the expression, you're basically solving for a certain variable here. And in this case, it says it here as the spring constant. So you're going to be solving for K, essentially. You can read the scenario to yourself if you would like to. Let's take a look at how it's graded. This point is worth three points. One is for an equation that is consistent with a law or principle. Two, that valid equation must contain certain variables that includes the spring constant. And three, there should be a correct and valid algebraic expression for a spring constant. So in the end, K has to be equal to something. Let's take a look at some potential answers that did occur. The sample one here. So here, the student wrote the basic principle was the spring formula. And two, they wrote down the spring constant can be found using a meter stick and a stopwatch in a school physics lab. All right, let's do the grading here. Did they state a relative principle or law? The spring formula doesn't count, so they didn't make here. Two, did they write an equation? There is no single equation. So they didn't get any of them here. Let's see what the graders say. The graders say here that this earns no points because there was no physics principle written in part I and there was no equation written in part I, I. Let's look at the example two. Here they state the conservation of energy. That conservation of energy allowed them to set up this equation. This looks like the gravitational spring is equal to the gravitational potential here. That's how they set up the equation. Then they solve for K. So it did look like they got the one point here for staying conservation of energy. Did they write an equation? Yes, that equation looks right. And did they solve correctly? Maybe. We'll see. I will put this as a zero. So the graders did give this answer a two out of three because the equation written here does match with the conservation of energy and the equation here written initially is correct but what happened is when they're solving for this they were supposed to divide by x squared to both sides so the answer should be 2 mgh over x squared that is their mistake that's why they didn't get the last point notice you can still earn the second point by just writing down the equation. Now, I want to talk about one more thing is this word determine. Originally, this isn't the correct setup of conservation of energy. Conservation of energy allows you to do energy initial is equal to energy final. And the energy initial is Us is equal plus Ug plus K is equal to the final versions of those. But notice this goes to zero, this goes to zero, this goes to zero, and this goes to zero, leaving you with the US is equal to UG that allows you to set up this equation. What I did that I demonstrate here are all the steps. But the question just says determine. When the question says determine, you can just jump to this step. But if the question says derive, okay, that means you have to start 
at a first principles point of view. So you have to start from conservation of energy. That's only if it says derived. In this case, it says determined, so you're okay. Next, after this, there will always have this step where you will have to list out the equipment. Then you would have to go over a procedure. Let's look at some potential answers to see how you should answer this. So my hint to you when you are designing the procedure or the chart is to use the equation that you did in the previous step to guide you here. We notice that K was equal to 2MGH over X squared. So if you look at the variables, you have mass, which is a variable. G is a constant. This is height. And this is your uh, spring compression distance. So the only thing that you need to measure are these three things. That should help you in terms of figuring out what equipment and what to measure as well as the procedure. So this is some particular answers. Here, this is relevant. The material needs to be relevant and appropriate. Then the procedure parts are always broken up into a couple of things here. The measurement needs to be sufficient. That's a key word to describe measurement needs to be sufficient and possible. The test that I use when it comes to possible procedures is to ask, can this be reproduced and get the result that I want, I need. Okay. Then there's always this step to reduce uncertainty. So you have to attempt to reduce uncertainty by doing multiple trials. Here is the example one with a potential answer here. So they measure the mass of the sphere with a triple beam balance, a ruler, for the spring compression distance because it is small and a motion sensor to get the velocity. Then when they write the procedure, they always include the last step. The, the process is repeated with the spring compressed at a different distance. That is the re to reduce uncertainty part. Let's look at a potential um, answer of this and let's look at how they grade this. So here, do we give them the relevant and appropriate equipment? All right, take a look. Is the steps sufficient? Is it, poss is it possible? And did they try to reduce uncertainty? So what the grader said is that they did not earn the point for the equipment because of this issue. The stopwatch will give you time, so it should be T. The velocity needs to be a motion sensor. That was what was wrong with the material. Everything else should be okay. Then the rest of the points were earned because it, it the, the process does describe a procedure, does describe, and it is the procedure uh, it does is possible because it does describe an experiment where you can get the velocity with a specific distance and time measured after a horizontal distance. So that is where uh, release at the same time the stopwatch is start where the ball moves, stop the watch once the ball reaches the meter, repeat other compression distance and find the velocity, divide the compression distance by the corresponding velocity to determine each quotient is the same. All right. So again, it, it was sufficient enough because it does show how to get the spring um, constant. And then is it possible? Yes, the experiment could be repeated. That's why it earned three out of five. It does not get the reduced error part here because it does not say that. OK, at some. Oh, another point was earned because it is done from multiple initial spring compressions. Uh, it does say ish right here. Repeat for a compression distance. 
Now let's take a look at sample two here. Do they have all the steps? A ruler for the compression of the spring, triple beam balance for the sphere, and a height with a meter stick. So it looks like they do get the first one. Is it sufficient? Look over the steps. It does look sufficient. Possible? Do they get multiple each step and repeat it for each position? Yeah, and they even have a diagram here. So yes, that is possible with the steps here. And did they do a repeat the experiment? Yes. So it looks like they did get everything. All right, let's see what the grader said. So here they did earn all five points because the equipment is correct with the valid tool. They do earn all four points because again, it is possible and the um, but the procedure does not need to indicate how different uh, in launch positions would affect the height. So that is good. And that they do repeat the experiment. One thing I would like you to notice is that the image here isn't really needed, but it does give the grader a better, a better understanding of your process, as well as if you list it out like step one, step two, step three, step four, it is better because once you do the repeating experiment part in the last step, you just say repeat the experiment starting at certain steps to reduce error. As long as you write that step, you should get the last point. Okay, because it does say for attempting to reduce uncertainty. So as long as you have repeat the experiment starting at step blank, 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 you should get the point. All right, okay. Then lastly, uh, for part C, it says describe how the experiment data could be used to analyze to confirm the hypothesis. So there's two ways to analyze it. Most of the time, it is either a slope or you are looking for a area. So for the slope part, you're looking for a delta y over a delta x sort of look. And for the area, you're looking for a base and a certain height. For in this case, we saw that it was k is equal to 2mgh over x squared. If you break this out by pulling out all the constants, it should look like 2mg times h over x squared. This technically is a constant, so what you're left with is an h and an x squared. So the delta y could be your h, your delta x could be your x squared. And the slope here should get you the k value, right? So that is what they did here in the point distribution. That is what they're referring to. And that's also another way to analyze it. Okay. All right. So here the it says the student wrote the experiment data can be analyzed by comparing the spring constant of the different compressed distances. So did they earn the point? The grader does give them the first one because the student says the experiment can be analyzed by comparing the spring constant. So here they, the grader gave it to them because it says for comparing. Yes, I know this is controversial because the student does say it can be analyzed, but the student doesn't actually do the analyzing. So, but the grader here did still give them that one point. Here it takes a look. Um, the the second sample here does show um, the experiment should be repeated. It gives the equation, and they talk about the average height measure, the sphere, compressed distance. Then the hypothesis is confirmed by making sure you ch change that and looking at those values. So that is correct. That does earn both points because it does indicate the spring constant can be found right here using the h values, the distance, and position x, all right? So that's why they get all the points here. Then lastly, um, all these questions have a certain point value. They needed this point just to get the last one. So there were two points here. You get the point to showing that the launch speed always decreases with an increase in the sphere's mass. And the last one, it's a concavity and has the launch speed decreasing. Right, so that should be the answer. Uh, this one is fairly easy to grade.
because they just uh, look at the graph. So this one does get the first one, but does not get the last one because it didn't concave. That's what the grader say for indicating the launch speed decreases, but they did not show concavity upwards. Here, this answer does earn both because it does show that answer. But here they showed some math here. This is okay, but not, but not required. As long as you show the correct graph, that's what they're really looking for. This just helps uh, probably the person graphing understanding why it goes down. Okay, because of the square root here. All right, so that's how it should look like. But that's it. So here you go. That This is a typical question when it comes to the experimental design and how it's graded from the grader's point of view.